Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you my hybrid cooling solution upgrade. So I'll be using the Kraken G12 bracket with the NZXT Kraken X72 360mm AIO cooler. This is my uh, NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti um, graphics card. This is a standard reference PCB. So the actual card I have was the uh, RTX uh, 2080 Ti gaming OC version of the palette. And uh, this is an A1 card, which means it can use uh, modified BIOSes. And I'm currently using the Galax 380 watt BIOS, which should allow me to push the card just a little bit further than um, what I would be able to do normally. So um, yeah, I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step installation. So first we wanna do start off with the 90 millimeter fan. This is gonna be responsible for cooling the VRM area of the RTX 2080 Ti. This will have to go obviously mounted onto the um, Kraken G12 bracket. So you wanna make sure that the uh, fan is oriented in the correct position. So um, this is the backside of the bracket. So this is where the air will be pushed onto the PCB of the RTX 2080 Ti. This is the whole way of the cooler will be um, mounted as well. So four standard uh, fan screws all uh, connect this to the bracket so i want to get these installed now so you guys um, can see how it looks so that's how it looks guys this is the um side that will be facing downwards towards your um case so you will see the nzxc insignia at the side and the fans will just be blowing air onto the pcb that hole there that you can see is where the uh, aio will be mounted so that's how it's going to look once installed and uh, so far um so good so okay so now you have to choose the bracket that will mount to your graphics card now funnily enough the amd bracket is the one that fits the rtx 20 2080 ti not the nvidia bracket so if you're doing a similar installation please use the amd bracket these are marked with an a for alpha which um is not very very hard to miss so this is the uh, bracket assembly literally uses uh four screws which go through the back of the pcb and uh hold it in place and uh this is what's going to be responsible for uh mounting the aio and and keeping it fixed to the gpu so this is the rear side of my pcb and you can see there's four screws with four washers um which uh, connect the bracket um, from the rear side. So again, that's just another look at the PCB itself. I've actually opted to add some um, uh, small, small CPU uh, VRM heatsink, sorry. And uh, this may provide some additional cooling. This is not essential, by the way. I've ran my card for over a year without any VRM heatsinks, but I thought I'd try and add some just to provide some additional cooling, maybe even push my memory overclock a little bit. Who knows? But um, it's not essential, just so you know, guys. So, moving on to the the NZXT Kraken um, X72 cooler itself, um, 360 millimeter rad, um, high end cooler, very very costly, I might add. But um, I just thought, what the hell? Let's just uh, let's just do it. So, three um, three uh, static pressure fans that can do up to two thousand RPM each, and that that should be not too loud in my system even at maximum that should be very very tolerable so these are all the fans connected now all ready to go so the orientation will be pushing the air from in the case outside the roof of the case yeah this is it now the uh, cooler mounted to the kraken g12 bracket looking very very nice simple process you lock the cooler in place and you screw those four screws into place. So that is it, guys. The cooler has now been installed. And it's time to show this thing off and get it working. So this is the uh, Kraken G12 bracket with the NZXT Kraken X72 cooler in all its glory. You can see that fits quite nice in the roof of my Thermaltake View 71. And um, 
I'm very, very interested to see how well this thing cools. 360 millimeters just for a GPU. Most would consider that overkill because it probably is. But when you're pushing over 350 watts through a GPU, it's going to need some cooling. So um, I'm very, very interested to see how this thing does. But this is a look at the card itself. It looks quite uh, rigid. There doesn't seem to be any GPU sag there. So I'm very, very happy with the uh, presentation. Uh, let's jump into the results now, shall we? So now that the hard part's out of the way, uh, let's have a look at the performance. But before I do that, I just want to show you a few settings. So using the RTX 2080 Ti by NVIDIA at stock settings at the moment, I just want to make a few points here. I'm using a 380 watt Galax BIOS, so my power draw will be considerably higher than I standard found edition um, RTX 2080 Ti. So um, in essence, it's going to create way more heat. So this is going to be a really, really good test. Um, so rather than run it at stock settings, I'll load my close to maximum overclock so you guys can have a good look at how this cooler can perform. So running at 2.13 um, gigahertz. And then I've added an extra 700 megahertz on the memory as well. Could push higher, but um, I just want to show you what my kind of everyday overclock runs at. So uh, Intel i9 9900K running at 5.1 gigahertz at 1.425 volts. Um, so one of the most interesting things I need to show you is the NZXT CAM software that accompanies the Kraken X72 um, AIO cooler. This is what's going to be responsible for your pump and the fan speed. So what you can do you set up a custom fan curve, which will allow you to monitor your GPU temp and adjust the fan speed accordingly. So this is essentially going to be controlling your GPU speed, if you're wondering. And it just allows you full control. And that's something that's uh, really good for me. So you don't need to make manual adjustments before you play games, etc. So uh, let's see um, how this cooler performs. And what I'm going to do is leave GPU Z up as well, which will monitor the maximum temperature in the background so uh, the test i'm going to use is the final fantasy 15 benchmark i'm going to be running at high quality which is the highest um uh, highest preset should i say and 3840 by 2160 4k resolution so this is going to be a great workout for the gpu so let's see how it gets on and uh, while being pushed to its maximum so the software that you see in the left hand side there is MSI Afterburner. That's also going to be responsible for monitoring all the GPU statistics that you can see. And um, your one won't look like this as you do need to tweak and customize it to your own desire. This is You're good. my custom layout. You're so good. that's why it looks the You're way good. it does. And stop. See you around. So as you can see, my GPU is pushing over 350 watts, which is Time to go. very right. high. I mean, a stock RTX 2080 Ti isn't going to do over 1200, um, 280 watts, so over 80 watts difference there, and uh, it really does make the difference. Um, so far, so good. Doing about 40, 41 to 42 degrees Celsius, which is um, really, really good. Um, I've used a um, 280 millimeter AIO and um, I would get into the 50s or just the low 50s. So this is already around eight degrees um, cooler. So I'm very, very interested to see what the final result will be at the end when uh, the temperature kind of stabilizes and we reach equilibrium. So let's see if we can keep it up, but maintaining a stable 250 megahertz on the core, which is very, very nice to see. So I'm very, very intrigued and I'm, very impressed so far as well by how well this is being called. The audio profile from the fans are actually really, really good as well. The NZXT fans max out at uh, 2000 RPM. So um, it's not really, really not that loud. It's around Let's about a, a 65 to 70% um, on a... Uh, blower fan or my a dual fan from a standard gpu air cooler in my opinion that's what i would compare it to so it's uh it's uh doing a, 
a way better job for about the same type of audio profile so um, I'm very very happy with what I'm seeing so far 43 degrees and just a little bit under halfway of the benchmark so far so looking good so if anyone who's curious of trying this test themselves this is of course the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark I'll put a link in the description so you guys can give it a go yourselves and if you're wondering nice ride you. how your GPU will do there will also be a score at the end so you can compare your own performance as well as GPU temperature towards what I'm doing right now this is a 100% um, pure result I'm capturing this footage on my uh, dedicated capture PC so there is absolutely no performance here right now so um, this is a pure result so I'm, I'm interested to see um, exactly how well this performs um, 215 and uh, 2.15 megahertz essentially um, stable which is awesome at 4k and we haven't even broke 45 degrees yet so it's looking good so far See this bit's quite CPU intensive, so this part gives your CPU quite a good workout. You can see reaching highs of 60, 60% and over at times, so this will give your whole system a workout. And uh, we're really interested to see what kind of scores um, you guys might be able to share in the comment section, so don't be shy to do that. So this is the final part of the benchmark now nearly done still managing to keep under 45 degrees so i am thoroughly impressed this type this is the type of cooling performance you should should expect from a full water block and uh a full um block and a full dedicated radiator as well so this is pretty much on par with a, a decent setup, so I'm very, very impressed with the results so far. If there's anyone else that's actually running a full water block with an RTX 2080 Ti with a custom BIOS, please let me know in the comment section what type of temperatures you're getting. I'll be very interested to see um, or hear from you in terms of what you're getting. So. That is the benchmark complete now. From what I can see, I, I think it didn't go over 44 degrees, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, that's the benchmark complete. Score of 7,106, but that's not so important. What is important is what GPU Z says the maximum temperature was. So max temp recorded was 44 degrees, averaged at 34.5, and with a low of 28 Celsius. So. I am very, very happy with that. That is amazing to see that. Imagine what the cooling would be like with a stock GPU. I could pretty much run the fans silent and it wouldn't break 50 degrees at stock. So I'm happy with that. Time to reduce my overclock. And uh, time to um, end the video here. Um, hopefully this has been useful to anyone that's considering doing some type of um, custom hybrid cooling i thought i'd share the upgrade with you guys so you can have a look behind the scenes of what i get up to every now and then so hopefully you enjoyed the video and as always thanks for watching